<laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to take a look at creating uh, slightly more realistic fabric shaders, uh, which have some interesting properties, uh, which will sort of uh, reveal a couple of techniques that um, that you can use for for several several things. Right, but first we're going to look at it in the context of a fabric shader. Um, so here we have a simple scene. It's a uh, just a little simple table with a tablecloth draped and uh, not a big deal. Okay, um, I do have a uh, little render view here. So if we do render this out, um, obviously you saw it right there, but nothing special. Simple three light setup, uh, and this is the default Lambert shader. Okay, so uh, first off. Uh, for, for cotton fabrics, uh, obviously we're not going to deal with uh, specularities of any kind in, in this instance. So uh, just uh, we're going to look at this in the context of a Lambert shader, right? So we look at this and it's not bad, right? But it, it, it does definitely exhibit sort of like uh, perfect surface qualities. Um, so let's, uh, let's first start by um, taking a quick look at our reference. Okay, so... I have here uh, a couple of scenes. Now, I, I chose uh, two pillows, right? Two scenes of pillows here. But, I mean, scenes, they're photographs. But they really do sort of uh, typify uh, some of the things that um, we think of when we see fabrics. So maybe a little bit exaggerated here, but exaggerated isn't always a bad thing. Um, when we look at fabrics, you know, they have a very fine, fine material quality, uh, loose fibers and things like that. And these fibers are actually translucent, which means that they, they actually um, pass some light through and they almost appear to illuminate from within. Now, it's, it's a very slight thing, but cumulative, cumulatively, they are, um, it does have an effect. Right? And, and we can see that here. There's almost, it looks like a very broad specular, but it isn't quite that, you know. We can see this lightning effect going on here, especially in these little folds as we sort of approach glancing angles. Um, it appears that it's picking up light from behind. Uh, here we can see a little bit of it here you know, across the top um, into these folds. And yes, it is being lit, but there's it almost is like a different surface quality on these glancing angles. Okay, and that's that's really sort of the important thing. Now, uh, also in the reference, I did pick up uh, a CG. Oops, yeah, well, you can see it here. Uh, there, there's a, a shader of this, um, and you can see how it, it's sort of how they're handling it. This is somewhat similar to how we want to end up looking uh, with our object here. You can see this um, different kind of surface quality here on the edge, and then here on these glancing angles, uh, kind of filling in some of the, the darker valleys that we would expect to be seeing in our areas here. All right, so let's take a look at what, what we can do to create that. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is um, we are going to go ahead and create our own um, Lambert shader and, as opposed to the default one. Right? So we'll create one here, a uh, simple click, and I'm going to name it uh, Table Cloth Shader. Pretty simple. Right? And if I apply it, Obviously, there's going to be no difference here, right? We, we, we've just done the exact same thing that we that we have for the default um, by dropping it in. So, not a big deal. Um, so, so really, the basis of a good uh, cloth shader is, is going to be, um, I mean, without a doubt, uh, let me store this here so we can always look back at it. Without a doubt, the basis of a good tablecloth is going to be... Um, a good color, right? So um, let's pop over to Photoshop here. Now I have in here a, a color image of, of a scan of some fabric. Um, this, of course, came from CG Textures, uh, if you're familiar. But you know, you can scan your own, uh, you can photograph your own, whatever it, it takes, right? This is a simple cotton weave here. So I, I pulled this out, and um, well, let's let's take a look at what happens when we apply that, right? Very simple. It's it's just you know good reference again, right? We're going to create a file texture, uh, no magic here, and we're going to go ahead and load that right here. 
Here we go. Okay, uh, so pretty simple. Let's take a render. All right, already leaps and bounds better. We can tell that um, pretty quickly. Now it does look a little bit um, heavy, right? Maybe it's got a heavy tooth. Now what I'm going to do here is is pretty sloppy, but I'm I'm going to set this to repeat uh, twice in the U and V. And one thing you'll see, um, let me store that. One thing you'll see here in our view is, is that if I if I do have it um, here, you can see that there's a a seam here. Now that's that's no good, right? Technically, we want to make sure that either we have a, a big enough starting image or we have um, we have fixed that in Photoshop uh, by painting out the seam using the offset filter. But in, in our case, uh, we're going to start or we're just going to use this because uh, sloppy or not, uh, it does give us a, a much better look. See, if I render this as it is, we can see, you know, that slightly denser cloth fabric feeling. Um, definitely looks better, right? Um, let's get a full screen here. Okay, from here to, oops, where is it? There it is, All right? So obviously this is definitely a little bit more to scale, right? Very important, to scale. And probably still too big, but it's gonna work for our purposes, okay? All right, so, so that's a good starting point. Now back to Photoshop, when we look again, you know, you can see what I've done is, is, is I've created a bump map for this, right? Just a desat and, and uh, a couple levels, levels adjustments to get something that I'm happy with. It's giving me a good range of, of colors, right? This isn't just uh, straight black and white or really washed out grays. It's, it's a good range, right? So I know that I can work with this. So let's go back to Maya. Okay, what we want to do is... Um, is we want to uh, obviously create this as a bump map. So right here in bump map, click that. I'm going to turn on, I got a file, just like I did it. And you can see that it creates our bump map nodes and uh, all these texture nodes. And I'm gonna go ahead and create this here, bump map, that's what I saved out and open. Okay, there it is. Um, and obviously, first thing I wanna do is double it down, right? So repeat twice. We want to maintain that okay so let's render that out and see how it looks okay so interesting things happening here right it, it's it's a little well not even a little it's crazy right because uh, once again you can see that uh, Maya Maya's default is terrible for us right it's way too big and you can see the consequence of this right the rendering has slowed down enormously Okay, so bump maps can have a significant effect if they're if they're trying to do too much. This is why we use these. I don't want to say sparingly because we use them a lot, um, but we have to be careful about how much we're trying to get out of it because it can very adversely affect our render time. And so I'm just going to stop that. I'm not even going to bother saving this, and I'm going to go ahead and bring our bump depth down. And I think, you know, cutting it by uh, ten times, right down to point one will be a, a good start of improvement. So we'll just do a quick check here. Okay, that's better. It still feels a little bit of a heavy tooth here. Look, I mean, you can see how much uh, grungy sort of details in there. So I'm, I'm gonna cut this in half one more time. Okay, let me um, go full size here and render that. Okay, that feels better, right? Now it's starting to feel a little bit more like a cottony sort of look. We can see a little bit of this striation here in the, in the, in the edges here. And we'll store this uh, so we can look back at, at our history here. You see that little bit of bump texture coming in when I flip between the previous one and the next one, uh, which is really nice. But, you know, it, it almost feels a little bit soft. Now, one of the reasons is because that another thing that Maya does by default is it adds this bump filtering. You know, this is something that uh, if you feel like you're really losing detail in your bumps, this may be the reason, right? And if your bumps feel soft or fuzzy or really lacking in detail, uh, this could be it. So I'm really just gonna bring this way down here uh, to 0.01 
and render again right so what's happening is it is it's it is blurring the bump map a little bit uh to i don't know to help out uh certainly with in certain cases this is going to help reduce what we call buzzing sort of odd non-anti-aliasing things happening on really extreme angles but mental ray is very good at handling that right so this is a little bit more for maya software render than it is mental ray and already you can see a really uh big difference here right we can see a lot more detail if i flip between uh this one which is our rendered one and here you can see that not only does it affect the fine detail but the overall look of the whole thing is, is very different right the way it handles our highlights and things like that okay so this is uh this is much better so already with uh with doing just simple shader stuff that we've already done this looks much better but we haven't even addressed the aspect um that we want to uh, look at which is those sort of um, interesting highlighting on, on the glancing angles. Shut up and sit down.